Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today we have a quilting play-by-play -play of Ghosts of Christmas Past. This is one of our older patterns. It was actually one of the first ones I ever released, but we remade it this year using all the scraps that we had from this year's 12 Banks of Christmas projects. So this is a great one for that because we're always separating our reds and our greens. So no two reds are ever next to each other and no two greens are never next to each other. So it really doesn't matter if all your greens match and all your reds match, you're able to fit like everything in this. So that's why it's called Ghost of Christmas Past because all of your past holiday project fabrics could live in this quilt. We have a separate tutorial that we put out in part of our 12 Banks of Christmas series that shows you how to piece this. But today we're gonna focus on how I quilted it. And when you put out 12 videos in 12 days, you gotta hustle it out to get stuff finished. So I didn't piece this one. One of our new team members, who's also named Stephanie, did the piecing. Um, but I did the quilting and I had about a day to do it. So I had to go really quickly, but that doesn't mean that I was comfortable doing just a big all over design. I wanted to do it justice and do like a really basic custom on it. So we're gonna take a look at that today. We're gonna talk a little bit about thread before we look at it. We use the GoPro so you can see what I'm seeing as I'm quilting. And then I kind of talk you through the decisions I make and what I'm doing to make that work. So what you'll see first is that I quilted all of my background using this plain white. This is actually Bone, it's color 17443 from Glide. I love it, it's their poly, their 48 weight poly. It has like a sheen to it and it really disappears over a lot of things. And I could have gotten used or away with just using this as an all over design on the entire quilt, but I wanted to give it a little bit more justice than that. So I also took my celery. I've said it before, I'll say it again, green is a neutral, ladies and gents. It looks great in a lot of quilts as a nice little background filler. And because almost all of these Christmas fabrics have some green in them, even if they're red, it looks really good. Even this one where it's just gold, it looks really good and just blends with that gold metallic. You can't even tell it's green until you come back over onto the next one where obviously it looks green. So what I did first, and you'll see this, is I quilted all my background first, then I quilted my outsides, again, with a new color. This one is Blueberry. It is color 30281. We are not sponsored. We do not sell Glide, but I highly recommend it. My machine really likes it. And that was just a really nice, you can see it just blends and it kind of fades away into that background. So that way I could get this all together. And, you know, even though I just did a stipple meander over everything, you're gonna see I changed my scale and the way I do it a little bit, depending on whether I'm working in the center blocks or the border, uh, skinny border or the big border. But I was able to really help the piecing pop by making sure that I used thread that helped accentuate that. And also that my border print was able to just kind of shine on its own because I picked a thread that really was going to blend in with that as opposed to be white and really stand out. Whereas this way, you really get to see the full um, glory of this Rifle Paper Company print, which is so beautiful because the thread and the quilting is enhancing it rather than detracting from it. So thread can really play a big role in doing that. So uh, as tempting as it is when you are short on time, you're trying to get stuff done for the holidays and you just, you know, think about that. Maybe you wanna switch up some threads. This was still really fast for me to do. I still use that stipple meander, which is a basic, very fast stitch, but we took it to the next level and the quilt is better for it. All right, let's watch some play by play. All right, so you can see that I am starting here with that skinny border. I did all of my white thread quilting first. And so I'm just doing what's called a stipple meander. It's a very basic stitch. The whole like goal of it is to have curvy um, ends that kind of look like a little bit like puzzle pieces that don't overlap. Um, of course, if you do overlap, it's not the end of the world. It just isn't, you know, technically what it's supposed to be, but it's totally fine. So since I'm working in a really narrow space, I kind of am doing a really similar uh, shape in each one. I'm kind of wiggling down, wiggling up, and then wiggling back down. So you kind of get these like sort of T-shaped um, wiggle, stipple meanders. And that is just an example of how you can modify what is a really basic stitch to fit the area that you're working on. And if that's something that you struggle with, 
um, we are going to have a big series coming in January on free motion quilting where we're going to cover four basic quilting stitches and then how you can modify them to make every single quilt you do look really custom and really great and like you know way more than four quilting stitches because these are the four quilting stitches that I use again and again and again. All right, so we're just gonna see, I'm just, what I basically did was I did all my skinny border and in this case, I was at the very top of the quilt. So I was able to go all the way around the top and a little bit of the sides. And then I was able to start my second pass where I'm able to work inside the block. So we'll go ahead and let you guys watch me do my little squiggly tees as I work my way around. I finished up there by stitching into the border so that I could have a nice clean stop. I always did that so that way I wasn't having to try to match starts and stops there. Then I started in the very corner and I'm doing what's more of a traditional stipple meander at this point. I still have the constraints of working in that triangle background but I am moving more around freely. I'm going from left to right up to down and I don't really have any rhyme or reason here except of the original goals of trying to have nice curves and had to not have anything cross over. And in this case, I always wanna stop at an up, start an upper corner and stop at the bottom. And then in this case, go all the way over and then always transfer at these corners. So you're gonna come in at one, fill it in, and then transfer over. And this is one of the reasons why I really love to press my seams open because I'm able to quilt right into that corner because it's nice and flat, it's not bulky. And when it gets super bulky, you can break your needle, it's hard to come in and out. You can blow a fuse in your machine and then that's no good because if you don't have one, you're down for at least a day while you're waiting for one to get overnighted to you. It's no good. Trust me, you don't want that to happen. So what I do this way is by pressing them open, I'm able to go right up into that corner and then pass through with very little issues. Every once in a while, something will get a little stuck and I've got to turn that wheel on the side just a little bit, but it really is not bad. And again, while this looks like, okay, this is really simple, this is considered one of the basic quilting stitches, if you are someone where you're like, but I don't know where to go next, then just stay tuned, like and subscribe, subscribe to our email list because in January we got you covered. We're gonna use some stencils to get the stitches down and then we're gonna learn how to customize them using free motion quilting. All right, I'm gonna let you go ahead and watch the rest of this cause uh, it's nothing new. It's just uh, doing those little wiggly lines all over and traveling between those points. So now you're seeing me start to work on the border. So what I did, if you can, you can kind of see in the background, I worked all the way down, stitching the border and the background as I went. And now that I've completely finished that, I'm at the bottom of the quilt. And so I'm gonna start working on that dark outside border. And I wanna get that secured next, so that way everything stays nice and square and we're good to go. Now this is a very wide border, so I wanted a very wide stitch to go with it. I'm actually gonna flip this over so that you can actually see the difference in the scale here. And this is a really great way to customize your quilting. You can see how big these loops are compared to what you see in the border and what you see in the quilting. The border and in the quilting are about the same scale. It's a nice medium sized scale of the um, meander, but this one is just really big. And it's great because you're able to cover a lot of ground quickly. 
you still are gonna get the look of it. Um, sometimes if you get things judged, they want you to quilt everything evenly so they would not like this. Um, but I was able to get it done really quickly. It still looks great. You don't see any of it anyway because that thread match was so great. Um, but it just creates a texture, gives a little something different for the eye to look at and helps you get done a lot faster. So then what I do, so I just walk you through the process. So you're seeing me quilt the very bottom of the border here. So what I did from here is I just rolled back enough to where I could get the next section of border and I would quilt both sides and keep doing that until I got to the top and could quilt through the entire top of the border before I'm ready to switch threads again. All right, so here we are, we're at the very end and you're gonna see I'm gonna quilt just right off the edge. And here you can see I'm starting, I started right on the edge and was able to fill in that side really well. And when you quilt off the edge, when you start and finish off the edge, that means you don't have anything that you need to tie off. Everything looks great, but you can really see just how big those strips are. Here's the other side. One thing I did do as I was stitching down is I stitched down the very edge um, just outside of where you can see that white line where we did kind of an edge around the, the quilt. And that helped keep everything nice and stable and square as we were going to. All right, so now it's time to start with the green. So at this point, I quilted all of my skinny border and my background in one go as I rolled down. And then as I rolled back up, I quilted the outside border. And now I switched to that green thread and I'm doing exactly the same thing I did with my white background just now I'm working in the Christmas prints and I'm keeping, trying to keep about the same scale so that it looks nice and uniform and feels nice and uniform from the back. And it'll also wash and wear uniformly as well. But I've just got that green thread so that way it matches better and lets those prints shine. That's kind of, a, a lot of times I'm working with uh, fabric companies to design and quilt items that will help show off their fabrics. And so part of my job in that is to pick quilting designs and pick threads that will accentuate that rather than take away from it. So while we love to make our quilting the star of the show, um, sometimes it's nice to let it have that texture, but also let it blend away. And if you're just getting started, thread matching is going to be your friend because if you do make a mistake, you're not really gonna see it as much because it really is just going to blend away. I mean, even in this mint one, you know, that green, it's a very like, it's, it's green, it's not mint. It really looks pretty and it doesn't look like a big deal and it really looks really good in here. I mean, even on this red right here, you can barely see that green. It really blends very nicely because you also have that green in the tree. All right, so when I stop here, what you just saw me do was I stitched once and back, and then I'm able to pull my bobbin thread to the top and be able to clip those threads without having to bury any threads. So as long as you lock those threads in place, they're not going anywhere, it's gonna be just fine. Um, if you want to do it for a show, then you definitely want to bury those threads. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that video. If all you can do is a stipple meander, I hope you see that you can really dress that up. You can do it different ways. You can play with your thread choices. You can play with how you use it in a border or in as in triangles like this, you can just play with a scale to make it look different. You really can get it fancy, even though it's one of the most basic free motion quilting stitches out there. So make sure, like I said, that you are liked, subscribed, and check and join our email list as well, because we have a very big free motion quilting series planned for you guys in January. I actually am gonna start filming that this week, so probably by the time you guys are watching this. I'm gonna be back in front of the camera doing the first videos for that. We're very excited about it because we wanna help you guys finish more quilts in 2022 on your home sewing machine or your long arm. We know there's a bunch of you who have computerized long arms who would love to also be able to do free motion and we are gonna cover that as well. 
So check it out. Again, the pattern is called Ghosts of Christmas Past. I'm Stephanie Sebbing from Quilt Addicts Anonymous. We still have Christmas fabric. We have all the goodies behind me. Those are pretty low. Um, and we have a lot of remnants, at least at the time that I'm filming this. But we also have brought in two brand new Christmas lines. We have Wonderland from Wyndham Fabrics, which is a very cute kids, uh, bright Christmas fabric. It's really cute and fun. It's got some nutcrackers and gifts. It make a great gift wrap too. We did a video on that, on how to do fabric gift wrap. And then we also brought in uh, Cozy and Magical by Maureen Cracknell for Art Gallery Fabrics. That is definitely a more grown-up collection. It's very sophisticated and it's pretty and it is on trend with home decor and I bet you guys will love that. So check that out and until next time, happy quilting! <music>